Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs, and today we're going to be discussing leptin resistance and thyroid resistance. All right, and what you are looking at right now is a blog post on my blog, um, and it is this blog post is about the topic we're going to be discussing, and you can see here that it has, um, I'm very grateful that it has over a thousand shares, um, and I hope that uh, it will be helpful for you today. If you don't know me, uh, this is my picture over here. I'm highlighting with my mouse. Um, I'm Dr. Childs, and so let's jump right in. Uh, to begin with, I want to talk about what is leptin. So leptin is one of those hormones uh, that isn't tested by doctors very frequently, and yet it has a huge impact on your body's ability to lose weight. So it is actually a very, very important hormone to be testing, especially if you are um, looking to lose weight or you have weight loss resistance. In other words, you've tried to lose weight, and no matter what you do, you're unable to do that. And so leptin is one of those hormones that may be standing in your way. So what is it? Well, first of all, it's a hormone that is secreted from your fat cells. So yes, they do more than just carry energy and give you cellulite. They actually secrete some hormones, and one of those is leptin. So what is supposed to happen in, the, in a perfect world is you, let's say you have food in abundance, you consume this food, your body takes those extra calories and produces more fat cells. Okay, and that's, that's good and that's normal because you need those fat cells for later use when food may not be as abundant. All right, so as your fat cells grow, they secrete a hormone called leptin, which goes back to your brain and says, hey brain, we have plenty of extra calories, um, we have lots of extra fuel, let's burn this fuel for energy instead of looking for new sources of food. All right, that's what's supposed to happen. So the leptin causes your basal metabolic rate to increase, it causes your appetite uh, to decrease, and it helps your body burn those extra fat cells, okay? So leptin resistance is the exact opposite of that. And I'm sure you've heard of other conditions with the term resistance, and they're a little bit confusing to understand. Uh, another one of these uh, resistance syndromes is insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes. Another one is thyroid resistance, which we're going to be discussing today as well. So what that means, what leptin resistance means, is there is an abnormal response in your body to the leptin, okay? So instead of your brain getting the message that it needs to increase your metabolism and decrease your appetite, the exact opposite happens. So the more weight that you gain, the bigger your fat cells get, the more your brain thinks you're starving. All right, so, and your brain, in conjunction with your hypothalamus and this hormone called leptin, it sets the metabolism in your body, okay? So one of the main reasons that people can't lose weight or they feel like it's impossible to lose weight is that they have a set point malfunction in their body whereby their body thinks their normal amount of calories they should be burning on a daily basis is significantly less than it should be. So for instance, your body may tell your brain may tell your body that you are going to burn only 1200 calories or 1300 calories per day no matter what you do and you obviously that isn't enough to control all the functions in your in your body so you consume more and that leads to perpetual weight gain. So leptin is one of the hormones that causes this dysfunction, okay? So how do we get leptin resistance? Obviously this is something that you don't want to have happen in your body. So the question is, how do we get it? And then we'll talk about what to do about it. Um, basically, you get leptin resistance uh, from a combination of things. So one of the most common causes is a huge amount of uh, weight gain in a short period of time. Okay. Another mechanism by which you can get leptin resistance um, is by recurrent yo-yo dieting. So if you if you have a, a period of a, a lot of calories and then a prolonged period of restricted calories, that sends a message to your brain that you need to slow down your metabolism so that your body uh, adapts to that lower amount of calories. And that constant abundance of calories and reduction of calories creates chaos in the brain 
and in that feedback system and leads to high levels of leptin. And we know that by checking the hormone levels in obese patients, especially after they lose weight. And so one of the studies, studies that I will discuss a little bit later in here is what happens to these hormones in patients who have lost a significant amount of weight due to calorie restriction. And one of the things that we notice is that those patients have persistent high levels of leptin even after they've lost weight, and that's a very abnormal response. Okay. So one of the questions you might be asking yourself is, do I have leptin resistance? Well, let's, let's talk about some of the symptoms that you might be experiencing. Um, so these, these are what I will typically see in my patients who have high levels of leptin. Um, number one is probably the inability to lose weight no matter what. All right, And most patients who fall into this category, they know that something is wrong in their body. If you are eating 1,000 calories per day or even less than that, and no matter what you do, you can't lose weight, that's a sign that there is some hormonal um, dysregulation going on in your body. Another indicator is constant weight gain no matter what. If you're one of those individuals that feels like if you just smell food or look at food, you gain weight, you might fall into the category of leptin resistance. Constant food cravings even after a large meal. Uh, that's another pretty frequent symptom. So patients will eat a, a huge meal that should stuff their stomach, and 30 minutes later, they're still hungry again, or they're, they're, their body is telling them or to crave certain foods. Another one is constant fatigue, low energy, or just feeling otherwise sluggish. And then another big one is worsening symptoms of hypothyroidism. And I've gone over all those symptoms before, but um, so I won't go over them right now. But I'm pretty sure you know the list of uh, the symptoms of hypothyroidism. Now, patients who have two or more of these are at high risk um, for having elevated leptin levels in their serum. And if you have two or more of these conditions, I would recommend that you get tested for it. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about next is how to actually diagnose leptin resistance. So it's unlike many other resistant syndromes, this one is actually pretty easy to diagnose. Um, all you need to do is get a serum leptin level. And if your serum leptin level is greater than 12, then you and you are overweight, then you fall into the category of someone who has leptin resistance. Okay, So you can very simply go to your doctor and say, I, I'd like a serum leptin level. They may, not, they may not know what leptin is, but it's an easy enough code to look at um, and to test for. And if you know that you have leptin resistance, even if your doctor doesn't know how to treat it, I'm going to give you some information so you can actually go about doing that. Okay, so another thing that I will recommend is ordering uric acid. And you can get that again in just a simple serum or blood test. And the cutoff and what, that I want you to use when ordering uric acid is 5. So your uric acid should be less than 5. If it's greater than 5, it's an indicator that you are probably consuming too much fructose for your body. Okay. And it's also one of those things that I can use to assess whether or not a patient is telling me the truth about their diet. Or if someone is unknowingly self-sabotaging their diet with foods that are high in fructose. Okay. So what this will, what this will tell you is, well, uric acid is a direct byproduct of fructose metabolism in the liver. And so the more fructose that you consume, it has the only way that it can get metabolized is through the liver. And so part of that breakdown is the production of uric acid, and you can directly test that in the serum. It's not a perfect test because what you'll find is that for some, what appears to be some genetic reasons, um, some patients just have a high uric acid level at baseline, even if they aren't, produ even if they aren't consuming high amounts of um, foods or, or liquids that contain uh, fructose. So just put that in the back of your head. Uh, another really important aspect of leptin resistance is the, its association with thyroid resistance and how leptin and thyroid hormone interact with each other in the body. Okay, And this is a really, really important point because if you have leptin resistance, your thyroid lab tests are not going to be um, as valuable, meaning they're less likely to be accurate. 
And the reason for this is leptin resistance is associated with higher levels of reverse T3. And if you don't know anything about thyroid function, which I'm assuming you know a little bit, but let me just explain this briefly. Reverse T3 is an anti-thyroid metabolite, meaning it competes for the free and active hormone, thyroid hormone at the cellular level. So if you have high levels of reverse T3, it's going to be difficult for your body to get adequate amounts of free T3 and therefore thyroid hormone into the cells. So both of these conditions really go kind of hand in hand. So if you believe you have leptin resistance and you check your serum leptin and it is greater than 12, then the next step is to order a complete thyroid panel. And if, even if you can't get your doctor to order that complete thyroid panel, the two tests you absolutely need to get is the reverse T3 and the free T3, which are very sensitive um, for diagnosing thyroid resistance. As a quick aside, you can kind of see the complete thyroid panel that I'm recommending in this blog post. So TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and then the antithyroid antibodies. I'd also probably add in there sex hormone binding globulin for many patients. Um, but again, even the bare bones minimum is the free T3 and the reverse T3, which are very sensitive uh, in figuring this out. So the, the trend of the, of the labs, of the thyroid labs that you will see in someone with leptin resistance um, and thyroid resistance looks like this. So many of these patients will have low levels of free T4, although they may still be in the normal range. Okay, so don't, if the doctor says, hey, your thyroid labs are normal, it's worth it to just say, hey, can I see those labs so that you can kind of look at them and use these ranges uh, to understand what's happening. So free T4 may be low or, or in that low normal range. Free T3 may actually be in the mid to high range, and then reverse T3 will be high, and that means that it'll probably be greater than 15. And this is the confusing part to many doctors and patients that don't quite understand um, thyroid function. Your TSH is probably going to be low, okay? So if it's less than 1, it might be like 0.6 or 0.9 or 0.5, and your doctor's going to say, well, if anything, you're borderline hyperthyroid. That's not true at all. What is happening here is the mid to high levels of free T3 are feeding back into the pituitary and causing a suppression of the TSH. And that's a compensatory response because your body knows that the, the reverse T3 levels are high. So to compensate, it tries to create more free T3 levels to outcompete the reverse T3 at the cellular receptor. And this causes a negative feedback, which causes a suppression of the TSH. So this is a very kind of important note that you want to understand when, when evaluating and reading thyroid lab studies in the setting of thyroid resistance or and or leptin resistance. Okay, so let's get kind of to the important part here, and that is, let's say you've gone through the motions, you've checked your serum leptin levels, you've checked your reverse T3 levels, your serum leptin is 20, which is means you have leptin resistance, and is a pretty, no, it's like a, I would say the average number I see in patients who have all the symptoms I mentioned before. So let's say you have a serum leptin of 20, your reverse T3 is 22. I mean, you are, you fall into the category of both. You have leptin resistance and thyroid resistance. So what do you do about it? So number one, you need to get on the right type and dose of thyroid hormone. Now for any patient with thyroid resistance, I, I always recommend they need T3 of, of some kind in their regimen. So that, that can be tricky uh, for some patients because doctors don't like to give out um, T3 medications with T3 typically. Um, but in this situation, it usually is required. It's especially required if you have leptin resistance. Now, if you come in and you were to see me and you had both of these issues, uh, I usually jump to T3 only medications. So I, I, don't even, I don't even try T4 like level thyroxine, Synthroid. And I usually don't even use natural desiccated thyroid in these situations. I just go straight to T3 and I titrate that up in a, in a slow manner until I can dump out all that reverse T3. So that reverse T3 that I said in the example before, let's say yours was 20 or 22, something like that, by giving you T3 only medication, you can dump that reverse T3 out pretty quickly, you know, on the order of usually two to three months. And that, that helps, that helps reset the metabolism and, and kick drive or uh, kick start. Um, the weight loss process. 
So this one's a little tricky. It's definitely probably one of the more important uh, treatments for patients who have these conditions, um, but it does require you to to get into contact and get in touch with a doctor who knows what they're doing. Okay. So number two, this is something that you can do on your own, and that is to add in high intensity interval training. Okay, specifically hit. Now sitting on a treadmill or getting on the elliptical for 45 minutes does not count. That would be considered kind of low to moderate intensity exercise. Um, what I'm talking about here is burst training or something that something that would look like this. You start out on it, you could still do it on a treadmill or an elliptical, but what you would do is you turn up the incline and the resistance to, to maximum or to 75% of maximum. You would go all out as hard as you possibly could for 30 seconds. You would then lower the resistance and the incline and do it for a, you know, a moderate intensity exercise for 90 seconds, then increase both the incline and the resistance again for another 30, and then take a rest for 90, and you rinse and repeat this process six to nine times over the course of 10 to 15 minutes. And what this is doing at the cellular level is sensitizing your body to the leptin and sensitizing your body to insulin, which, which uh, uh, um, these two syndromes go together um, a lot of the time as well. So high intensity interval training. Now this is something you can do at home. Um, I know what you're going to say. Many of you are probably experiencing crushing fatigue, which is one of the symptoms of leptin resistance. Um, and that can be that can be quite difficult to do this type of training if you're suffering from that fatigue, which is why it comes back to number one, where you need to get on that dose of thyroid hormone. However, if your fatigue is not that not terrible, it's worth it adding it in, even just once per week or once every two weeks. You're going to want to add this in slowly and increase over time. Number three should go without saying, and that is to avoid highly processed foods, anything that increases inflammation, anything with high um, industrial high amounts of industrial seed oils or omega-6 fatty acids need to be eliminated from your diet. They, they make your thyroid function worse. They um, actually increase the conversion of T4 to reverse T3, which makes the leptin resistance and thyroid resistance worse. So avoid those if you aren't already. That includes, that includes eating out at fast food restaurants. That includes box foods, just anything processed. Number four is to get an adequate amount of sleep. Uh, for most people, that's a minimum of seven hours. I recommend always eight. And that's just a, a better way to go. And there are several studies that show lack of sleep increases leptin levels, so it's, it's pretty straightforward. You'll know um, why sleep is so important, because if you get four or five hours, you feel terrible. It's pretty straightforward. Number five is you need to make sure you reduce the amount of fructose that you are consuming. Okay, and this is one of those situations where I will actually recommend that some patients watch their fruit intake. In general, I, I think fruit is okay, even if you are trying to reduce carbs, um, unless you have leptin resistance. Um, so in that case, I recommend consuming less fruit than you would normally, um, just so you can kind of do this for a couple months to dump out those leptin levels and reverse the resistance, and you can usually add them back in afterwards. If you're still consuming processed foods, you absolutely want to exclude anything that has high fructose corn syrup in it. Okay, so it's pretty easy to define the HFCS, the high fructose corn syrup. Just look in the ingredients at the back of whatever food you're consuming. Um, but, but definitely cut that if you haven't already. It's very damaging to the liver, makes leptin resistance worse, etc. cetera. Uh, number six is to make sure you stop any and all calorie-restricted dieting. That means no HCG diets, that means no ideal protein diets, that means anything that is disguised as a way to reduce the total amount of calories you consume. I don't care what the little gimmick associated with it is. You know, it's most diets are a way, they, they kind of hide the way that they're reducing your calories by saying, you know, you get a point system or you get to count your carbs or whatever it is. All of them do the same thing and that's reduce your calories, reduce your metabolism, make thyroid function worse, and increase leptin levels. They have got to go if you haven't already. Unfortunately, the reason that so many patients suffer from weight loss resistance even now is because of all the damage they have done to their body with recurrent yo-yo dieting throughout their life. So th those patients are particularly difficult to treat. Now, it's not impossible. It just makes it more difficult. Okay. Number seven, you want to make sure you optimize your T4 to T3 conversion. And do not confuse this with T4 to reverse T3 conversion, okay? That's T4 to reverse T3 is bad, 
T4 to T3 is good. Okay, and there are some there are some easy ways to boost that conversion. And I, I have a, a whole other video on this, but some supplements actually help with that. And that would be a combination of zinc and selenium, especially if you're hypothyroid, can sometimes be enough to boost that com the T4 to T3 conversion um, just a little bit. And what I'll do in the video description is I'll include some of the links that, of the supplements that I recommend that are high quality that can help um, boost that conversion process. I also have a whole other blog post on how to naturally boost the T4 to T3 conversion that you can check out as well if you want to. And then number eight is to consider using uh, medication that lower leptin levels. Now I will almost always recommend a patient with leptin resistance gets on or at least trials this type of medication because of how effective they can be. All right, and the medication class that is extremely effective in doing this is the GLP-1 agonists. Okay, so you can see there's actually several studies. So this study that I'm quoting here is the treatment with the GLP-1 agonist diminishes the de decrease in free plasma leptin during maintenance of weight loss. So this study showed that, um, and as I kind of mentioned before, patients who have lost a significant amount of weight due to calorie restriction, if you follow their hormones six months, 12 months after they've lost that weight, they almost always gain it back. And one of the things we'll no, you will notice in these patients is they all have incredibly high levels of leptin. So the thought was, well, what if we can create a medication that lowers these leptin levels? Will it then allow those patients to keep off the weight? And the answer is, yes, it actually does if you can attenuate that leptin um, response. Now, more, now I, I don't recommend doing calorie-restricted dieting to lose weight. However, if you've done it in the past, the GLP-1 agonist can help keep that weight off, okay? But a better way of doing it is to just say, hey, let's heal your metabolism. Let's replace the thyroid hormone that's in your body. Let's put you on the GLP-1 agonist. Let's change your diet. Let's do these eight steps I'm talking about. And then let's help your body lose weight the right way. And then you don't even have to worry about um, interfering with these hormone imbalances later on, okay? So there's another study I didn't include here, but um, and I just want to give this information to you, but the GLP-1 agonist is actually a diabetic medication. Okay, so it was designed to reduce insulin resistance, um, and one of the side effects is that they noticed it also helped a lot with weight. So when you go to your doctor and you ask about it, they're probably not going to know what to do with a GLP-1 agonist, especially for the treatment of leptin resistance, because that's not what the medication was designed to do. Now, yes, it actually does help lower leptin resistance, but your doctor may not know that. So but the tricky thing is, um, if you're not diabetic, it may be very difficult for you to get on this medication. But that doesn't mean it won't be effective for you. There's actually several studies showing that um, obese, non-diabetic women lose a considerable, considerable amount of weight on this medication, um, the GLP-1 uh, agonist. So just remember that when you're asking for these medications. So... I hope you found this, this video helpful, um, and, and it's going to be on a pot, in podcast form as well. Um, again, I'm Dr. Childs, and this is, this is my blog. If you have any questions, then you know, don't hesitate to leave a comment, either on the blog or um, on this, in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed this content, please subscribe, and otherwise I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks.